Uh, I would say that he is uh, doubtful for tomorrow, uh, but he's getting a lot better. And I, I don't know that for sure. He, he went out today. He was taped up. He was out there a little bit. We'll see how much he improves tomorrow. Uh, but in uh, my mind, I'm not counting on him for tomorrow's game. I'm hoping that he'll be ready and, and back by Saturday. If he uh, uh, heals up and feels like he can go, and it'll be really him making the decision, and then that's great. But uh, right now, we're going to game plan on him being out. How much of a factor was his absence the last time he played at ASU? It, it's a huge factor. Uh, you have one of our best players, uh, one of our leading scorers, uh, a guy that's uh, played well all year long, having him out of the lineup is, is tough. I mean, uh, he's obviously a very good player and a guy that on uh, a given night can get you 20 points. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be conservative with it. You know, we've got a lot of basketball left to play. We're not going to rush him back unless he's comfortable. You know, it's got to be his thing. So. You know, it's going to make it much more tough, and it puts more, uh, you know, uh, of a challenge to everybody else uh, on the team, and, and especially uh, Dave, Kyle, and, and Tony. And those guys answered the bell on Sunday, so now it's another challenge. And these bigs uh, are, you know, that's where they really hurt us last time. I mean, Wojcicki killed us, uh, 22, 16, and 7, I think, or maybe it was 14, 22, 14, and 7. He was dominant. And, uh, you know, we've got to do a better job. And he's a very good player. He got second in the country in block shots. I was looking at his block shots, and he had 12 blocks in one game against Marjorie this year. He's had nine in two different games. And the guy has great size, good timing. He's a good athlete. He's got a nice touch. He plays hard. He's tough. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a tough customer. And they're, they're a really good team. I mean. They just beat Colorado, Colorado prior, prior to their last two games this past weekend. I mean, that, we know that's a hard place to play, and Colorado's a very good team. And they lost to Washington. Washington's got a good team, too. I mean, Washington's starting three seniors, and, you know, they, they went in there and toughed one out in a close game. But uh, ASU, like uh, everybody in our league, can beat anybody on a given night. And they're playing right now, and I look at the bracketology, they know that Lenardi has them as the last team out. What's going to help them get in? Beat us tomorrow. We understand that. That's the kind of mindset and uh, emphasis they're going to have on this game tomorrow. We've got to be up to that challenge. Do you know where, do you, know where you are on bracket culture? I don't. <laughs> where are we? It's seven. Seven seven. <laughs> what do you have to do to, to neutralize that? Well, I'm neutralizing Alec. It's got the defense got to keep him from yeah, well, you know what? They're, they're good at being patient, and getting the ball into them. We've got to uh, play physical and hold our ground, not let him wade you in at two feet. We're giving up, you know, weight except for Tony. I mean, Tony's going to be important, and, and the thing that Jinsky has over Tony is just experience. But, but on the other hand, how do you keep you from dominating the game in the middle like that? We have to. But we get a shot fake better. I mean, he blocked six of our shots last time. And, uh, you know, you just don't see too many guys like him. It's like, you know, uh, we, we can't uh, simulate Paczynski out in our practice. We have no one like that. So you've got to, you know, adjust to it as you, when you play against him. How much more trust do you have in Tony, especially given what he did in the last I was so uh, happy about Tony's minutes, particularly in the first half. But I, I have a lot of confidence in Tony and his experience. And, and uh, so I know he's excited about his opportunity right now, and it's going to continue. It's, it's just good to have that, uh, you know. I, what he gives us that I thought that uh, I was real good was the physicality inside. Like, you know, he's hitting you know, banging bodies. That's what we need him to do. Uh, you know, he had three fouls and, and two in the first half, and uh, you know, but I, I'm really pleased about how he's developing over the course of the season. And I thought that you know he, he showed uh, you know really good minutes for us uh, you know, on Sunday. Larry said Larry said he's needed some reminders sometimes to use that weight to be physical. Has that kind of been his biggest obstacle? You think? Just yeah, you know, it's one thing. To, I mean, when you're in high school and you're that size, you're almost always bigger than everybody else. Now everybody's got the same kind of size <laughs> as you do in most cases. So now it's just learning 
teaching him and, and getting it to be a habit to play with physicality because that's his strength. I and mean, then he's strong. He's got great lower body. He's got good strength. He's got good hands. And he's learning, and it's been a learning process. And like I said before, I mean, I have never coached a better kid than Tony Parker in 32 years. He's as good a young man as you, you're going to find. And he's got a great work ethic. He wants it bad. He's doing extra work. He's going to develop into a real nice player. He seemed a little more patient offensively when he got passes. Is that something that's been an emphasis for you? Yeah, just learning to let their game slow down. You know, when you're a freshman thrown in, and you, especially a big, you got all these guards are swiping at you. They're like piranha, you know, when the ball goes in there. And you've got to learn how not to get sped up, but to stay patient, to slow down. A lot of post guys have to learn how to slow down, let the game slow down, uh, and, 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 and play slower in, inside. And uh, what I was really pleased with, too, that he went to his left hand. You know, like one, one of Tony's bad habits that he had when he first got here, and he continues to try to get better at, every time he catches in the post, you know what the first thing he wants to do? Go. And like a lot of, and, and so and by dribbling it, his eye, his eye looked the most uh, improved and the widest I've seen it in a week. So I think that's a good sign as well. I think it's improving, and I think he, he should be able to wear the contact in the game anymore. You know, in practice, we probably want to have him use the goggles here until it's complete. But that's that's late from the doctor. I'm out. I don't know. And he's zone for one possession against that season. Uh, foul trouble, uh, you know, we had two bigs in there with, with fouls, just something different for one possession, and we still gave up the land. <laughs> <laughs> How much did it help Tony just getting uh, potentially screened back to back, you know, solid games for him, just building his confidence? That, that would be great. Do you see him, you know, does his attitude change a little bit coming off a game like he had on Sunday? Yeah, he's great all the time. I mean, you know, he, he, he took so much, uh, I think, uh, you know, stuff from everybody. You're not playing. How does it feel? I mean, it was really hard on him early. I can't tell you, for a McDonald's All-American, a kid who's had so much success, to keep such a great attitude throughout our season, uh, I just can't say enough about it as a kid. And you can see, now, now thrusting the opportunity, he takes advantage of it. And I'm just so happy for him, and I, I'm just so excited because I just see how good he's going to be down the road. Uh, you know, I, I really feel that way. So I, I'm really proud of Tony for his positive, being such a great teammate to his teammates. Uh, you know, he's been fantastic. And so, you know, you, you, in other words, that, that kind of situation couldn't happen to a nicer person. The guy deserves it more. He's like a good Christian kid. This kid goes to Sunday. Uh, church, you know, uh, he's got a beautiful girlfriend who's a player at USC, who's just gorgeous, nice, beautiful high school sweetheart. I mean, you know, he, he's, yeah, that's another USC girlfriend we got. We got three of them. Our whole front line, with the exception of Kyle, are dating girls from SC. Dating Tom? <laughs> You, you talked about this year that Jordan has sort of exceeded your expectations when you had come there. What's he done so far? Well, you know what? He plays well. Like, I was so excited about Jordan's defensive rebounding. He had big rebounds late in that game Sunday. You know, he, he, he shoots the ball well. He's making good decisions. He's a good passer. But, you know, he's, in, he's, he's guarding now the other team's best wing night in, night out. And uh, so he's playing unselfishly. He's a great team guy. He's playing tough. He does all the little things. You know, he throws his body around. He's not afraid to get in there and bang with people. And uh, we really need him to rebound the way he did the other day. And those six defensive boards were huge. And uh, I'd like to see that. And, and uh, you know, he's going to have an opportunity to do that again tomorrow. What was the uh, reason behind switching him up for the best wing player? He's, I think he's done that for the most part. Yeah, he's been doing that all year. But, uh, you know, so whether it's a two or a three, uh, he's a, he's done a good job. And, and, and you know, he's he's a tough, hard-nosed guy. He comes from a great high school program. I mean, uh, Coach Smith, man, we went to one day. He, he's had like you know 30 NBA players come out of his program. I mean, it's as much as any university. Uh, it's incredible.
More questions? Okay, thanks.